My research shows that the creator of the universe was not known as God. The creator was never known or was never called God from the beginning of time. The title or the name God is the name of a Germanic idol. It is there. Google it. You come across it. It is called Gouda. Then, gradually, it was corrupted. This is how it, they spell it. Gouda. The German, is a Germanic idol which was corrupted. Then, gradually, it was changed to what? Gouda. From there, it was shortened when the King James and his 47 clergymen were translating the Bible or the Afar scriptures. They turned it into what? God. From the beginning of time, before the Europeans translated the Bible, this was not the name of the creator. The title God was never the name of the creator. So the question is, what was the what name, was the name yes. of the creator? Now we're going to find out what was the name of the creator. God, a German for Bosom. God, a German for Bosom. Obian Koya ni research and find out the truth. Now we look at, we're going to look at the true name. Mm -hmm. of the creator this is where i would like to use the scriptures we will start off from um, i would like everyone to read first samuel chapter 12 verse 8 in this scripture samuel invoke the god of thunder lightning and fire this god of thunder lightning and fire when you come to the ever pilo language I'm using the word Pilo because it's one of the ancient languages, one of the oldest languages. The god of thunder is known in the ever Pilo language as what? Now, after you finish or we finish reading 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 18, we go to Job chapter 37, verse 4 to 5. That also describes or gives you a clear understanding of who the God of thunder, lightning is. Then from there, we can also read 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 10. It also will give you a clear picture of who, or of how, or let me say the true name of the creator is. So now let's come back home to the ever pilo language. We in the water region, or when I say ever pilot, when I say we in ever Danyigba, when I say ever Danyigba, I'm not only talking about the water region, but I'm talking about four or five countries put together or more. You're talking about Ghana, talking about the people of Gadangbe. When I talk about the Gadangbe, our people from Greater Accra, all the way to Sudoku, attached to the water region. The Votarians, Anglos, all the Votarians. Okay, then our people in Togo, Benin, and Nigeria, the Yoruba, the, these are all part of the Ebedanyigma. That is what was known as what? The Slave Coast. Then we have the Gold Coast. Then the Ivory Coast. This is how the Europeans divided our land during the slave trade. So we as a vow, our, our, our God, let's say our Mawuga is the God of thunder and lightning. And his name is who? Now, this is Yeva, the God of thunder, lightning, lightning and, and fire. fire. This is Yeva. So how do you know his people? Which means if his people are called by name, it means that his people derive this, their name from his name. So from there, you have, what do you have here? Ever. That is ever or a vowel referring to us. Ever. So, Yebe. God of thunder. God of thunder. Lightning, lightning and, and thunder. He has his own priesthood nation. I'm coming. I'm coming there. So that is why today, even from the ancient of this, even from the time the nation of Israel was there, the God of thunder and lightning was there. 
if you go to Nogoku today, the God of thunder and lightning is still there. It's still there. It's still there. It's we brought it up. To understand African spirituality, we need to redefine the Eurocentric concept of God because their concept of God has nothing to do with our concept of God. For instance, when you go to first, uh, when you go to first Samuel, I wish we have the Bible here. First they Samuel read. chapter 12, verse 8. There they say Samuel invoked the God of thunder and lightning. So until you invoke it, until you activate it and assign a specific role to him, cannot just get up and, and, and strike. In the ancient past, when the Israelites were even going to war, it's a god of war. He goes to war. He strikes all his enemies dead. That is why today, up to today, people don't really understand why the God in the Bible in those days was striking people dead by lightning and thunder.